Hello, my name is Paul Boag and I'm a conversion rate optimization expert. And in this video, I want to take you through how AI is transforming the work I do. And in particular, how it can help you improve the landing pages that you produce. So let's jump right in. AI is absolutely transforming all aspects of conversion rate optimization at the moment, and it is an invaluable tool that you definitely need to be using as part of your workflow. It's helping us in all kinds of ways, from the really obvious, like improving the copy that we write, helping us to write more engaging, more web-friendly copy, through to things like A-B testing and, and automating that process so that it can try lots of different variations. Then there's research analysis. So you can do open-ended questions now and get AI to run through all those open-ended questions and find out themes that you can, um, you know, have been within the answers that you've seen. Then, of course, there's image generation. We can now get exactly the image that we want with exactly the right eye line, exactly the right people, exactly the right background. Whatever we need, we can create. And of course, then there's personalization, that AI can help personalize the experience more than anything else. But what I wanna focus on today is predictive analysis. The fact that AI is actually capable of helping us to predict what users will do when they come to a website. Obviously, there are all kinds of different things that impact whether or not a landing page you produce converts. Factors such as the copy and the messaging that you've got on your landing page, things like calls to action and how those are worded and where they're placed, social proof, objection handling, pricing, all kinds of things. But again, the one that I want to focus on today is layout, how the page is structured and organized. There is this element of how we structure our pages and the fact that AI can help us to know how to structure those pages in such a way that we draw people's attention to the things we want them to see on our landing page. You see, on average, according to research done by Microsoft, a user is spending about eight seconds deciding whether or not this page is right for them. And so that doesn't give us very long to communicate the messages that we want to communicate. And layout is increasingly important in ensuring that we draw attention to the right things in those eight seconds. So there are a lot of layout considerations and things like where do we place the call to action? And do users actually see that call to action or do they miss it? And then there's critical messaging as well. Do we know whether users are actually going to spot the critical messaging and read it in those eight seconds? Because that's the two things we need to achieve in those first eight seconds. Have they read the key messaging? Did we get across what the offering is? And do people know what they've got to do next? So traditionally, we would go about testing that manually. But to do that, we need to know where people are going to look and that we have got a limited suite of ways of us knowing that. There's all kinds of different testing we could do, but a lot of it is pretty time consuming. The big ones that make a real difference are things like eye tracking. And there are tools like RealEye out there, which allows you to do eye tracking with nothing more than a webcam. So that's a really good way of kind of seeing whether people are looking at the right elements on the page. But then there's this as well. This is called a snap test where you show somebody uh, a design for a landing page for a few seconds. In this case, eight seconds. You let the user look through the page. And then at the end, you say, well, what does this page offer? And that you see whether or not users get that correct. You might also ask them what screen elements they saw on the page as well, so that you can get an idea of whether they're seeing the right elements. Now you could do facilitated usability testing as well if you wanted to know where people are looking on the page and what they remember. But all of these different techniques have a fundamental downside, and that is, that they are time consuming to set up. Even if you do something easy like a snap test where you just put the design up online, you show it to some users and they fill it in completely unfacilitated, that still is gonna take you probably about half an hour to set up and the same again to analyze the results. And of course, there's the length of time it takes people to respond to that. 
So even a quick test like that can take a few hours, if not days to get results. And that means you have to wait around before you can then go, oh no, that wasn't quite right. I need to do another variation. And then you have to go through the whole process again to test that that variation is better. And then of course, the other problem is getting access to users. It can often be very challenging to get access to the people that you need to complete these tests. So testing the layout of your page has traditionally been a little bit cumbersome, but now there is a new generation of AI tools that can predict where people will look on a page to a 90 to 96% accuracy. Now, the way that they do that is they've taken thousands of hours of eye tracking studies and analyzed that data in order to make predictions about where people will look on the page. And so there is a new generation of tools that make it super easy for us to see whether people are going to see our critical calls to action or our strap lines or our key messaging or whatever it is. Now, there are lots of different tools. I'll mention a couple more in a minute. But the one that I tend to use a lot is one called Attention Insight. And it's a great tool that you can basically quickly get feedback on the layout of your landing page to ascertain whether or not it's structured in a way that's going to draw attention to the right things. So it's very simple. You just click to create a new analysis. You select the type of um, design you're doing. You upload a sample page or mock-up maybe that you've created and you give it a name and you can name it whatever you want. And then you basically say what type of page is it? Is it a landing page, an e-commerce page, etc.? You inspect the design to make sure that it looks like it's supposed to and is uploaded properly. And when you're good to go, you just set it to an, uh, analyze. Now, it spends a few seconds working that out, and then it will give you a heat map like this. And it's automatically selected the calls to action, and you can see how attention is in different parts of the page. And you can even select a re uh, region that you're interested in, give it a name. And what it will do then is calculate how much attention is going to that particular element. Now, alongside this, it also gives you a clarity score, which gives you a sense of how well the page is doing, and a focus score, which is um, how much attention is going to different elements. So you've got complete control over understanding whether users get your page or not, whether they understand. So as you can see from this mock-up, a lot of attention is being drawn to those faces, and that is drawing attention away from calls to action and other critical elements on the page. So the question then becomes, well, how do we improve our score? Because we want our score to be as good as possible. Now, this is a whole massive area, but let me give you a few quick tips that will help you improve your score as you upload mockups um, to something like Attention Insight. First of all, simplify relentlessly. What I tend to do is go through every single element on a um, mock-up or a uh, landing page and ask myself three questions in order. Question number one is, can I remove this element? Will the page still work without that particular element being there? And as we saw from the example of the uh, six, CXL homepage, actually there were a load of faces there that were pulling attention away from the critical messaging and not adding a huge amount of value. So those faces are a great example of something that could be removed with probably not undermining your conversion, but actually improving it. But obviously you can't remove everything. So if you can't remove an element, then could you hide it? So this might be secondary messaging for a secondary audience. So maybe we could put it on another page or under an accordion or a tab to remove those distractions and focus people on the core element. The more elements on your page, the more focus is going to be divided and the lower your ultimately your conversion rate will likely be. But if you can't hide it even, maybe, for example, it's a piece of compliance text, you know, legalese or whatever else, then can you shrink it? Can you de-emphasize it so attention goes more to the elements that matter? So that's a one really good way of improving the conversion rate um, and the score that you get on your landing pages. Another layout tip that you can do is to really consider how your imagery and shapes on the page make up the overall design and where it's drawing attention. 
So take, for example, this mock-up that I've produced. Notice how we've created a triangle shape out of the heading and the subheading that is pointing and drawing attention down to that shop button. Notice how there is a person standing directly next to the shop now button, because again, we're programmed to look at people. Look at the person in the bottom left corner. Notice his eye line and he's pointing directly at the shop now button. We tend to follow people's gazes. We also follow where they're pointing. So again, I'm drawing attention to that shop now button. And then the woman that's directly below the shop now button has an arrow on her head pointing at that button. So everything about the layout of this page has been created in such a way to draw attention to that key element. And think long and hard about images. You saw um, on that CXL mock-up how faces draw the attention and how in this mock-up you can see how uh, attention is completely moved across to that woman, largely ignoring the critical messaging on the left-hand side. People's eyes have jumped directly to the right. And if we just pick a different image, we can completely change that. So by having the guy looking back over at the text and the call to action, suddenly all the attention shifts over there. So what images we pick and where we place those images and what those images are will make a huge difference on the score that you get with some of these predictive AI models that are predicting where people are going to look on the page. Then, of course, there's where we place those calls to action. You would think that placing the call to action high on the page above the fold is always the right thing to do, and it's not necessarily. So one of the great things that you can do with these uh, predictive models is you can try placing it in different places and see how that impacts attention. Sometimes having it, for example, lower on the page, but in the main flow of the content rather than in a right-hand column, for example, can work out much, much better for you. Also, adding a lot of white space around a call to action is another great way of pulling attention to it. Again, it's that thing of not you know, creating a lot of busyness around um, your design and removing as much as you can. It's like you will spot the smallest fleck of dirt on a white wall, but you won't spot it on a patterned wall. And it's the same principle. Give it space and our eyes are drawn. And the predictive models will know this. And then you can also use things like color, having a contrasting color as we've got here on the shop now button to draw attention. Don't rely on color all by itself because um, some people are colorblind, but again, it will help you as you run it through this uh, predictive model to get a better score, to get people looking where you want them to look. Size as well makes a big difference. Make it big, that will draw more attention. So there are all these different techniques that you can use. And what's great about using tools like Attention Insight is it's a very cost-effective way of quickly iterating over your design, trying different things and see what works. They only charge you 29 euros a month for 40 uploads. So that means you can try 40 different versions of your landing page with different tweaks and different changes to see which one is gonna most work for the particular um, layout that you've got. Now, there are other tools available. There's uh, Fengui is a very good tool, also allows you to do very similar thing. Then there's iQuant, which is more of an enterprise level tool, but again, incredibly powerful, probably even more powerful than Attention Insight. Explore these different tools and see what works for you. I think it's important, however, to say this isn't a replacement for traditional testing. These models do get it wrong sometimes. You have to take what they say with a pinch of salt, and it's never going to be as good as a snap test or unfacilitated or facilitated usability testing or even traditional eye tracking. But it does work as like a a grammar checker, but for layout, right? So, you know, it's a, a quick sanity check to make sure you're going in the right direction. So there you go, another tool in your arsenal that hopefully will help you improve the landing pages that you've got. Why not sign up for it for a month, upload your current landing pages and see how they score and see for yourself what you can do to improve the layout and the conversion rate ultimately of your landing pages. Mm -hmm.